Hey guys, my name's Ali Nadia and welcome back to Let's Play Mado Monica the Big Kindergarten Kids. Or if you're in the real world. Hey guys, my name's Shu. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be exploring uh, Magic Village mostly, but also we're going to be going back here through this secret place. Yeah, I, I, I could say passage, but that would be cheating. And we'll select here, Jugem Magic. Face your opponent and recite Jugem. With a power that should be feared, it will snatch away your enemy's strength. However, as a result, consuming large amounts of magical power, when your magic level is low, you won't be able to cast it. This is the most powerful offensive magic in the game. We just got it in episode 4. I mean, uh, by the way, just to point out, we're not going to get into the first dungeon. Um, but still, Jugan Magic, as you can see there, three little circles. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's meant to be, but hey, I'm not sure what any of this is meant. Not any of those are meant to be like brain dumbed, particularly. Oh well. Yeah, uh, yeah. This the attack ignores the enemy's defense. Um, it only has, I believe, 100% attack value, uh, which is the same as Fire, Ice, Storm, and Thunder, but it'll normally cause between four and three times the amount of damage of those attacks, uh, assuming that you've upgraded each of those, that is, to the point where you can at that in the, yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's, it's a really powerful magic, but it will do the same amount of damage to the weakest enemy in the game and the final boss. Um, it is still dependent upon your power, so it's not a preset amount of damage, but it's still pretty awesome. However, like most uh, super powerful overpowered magics, oh, just um, want to point out this is Skate Fist Junior's house. There's nothing there, but we will be coming back there eventually, I'm sure. Anyway, like most um, super powerful overpowered magic things, it it yeah, it takes a bit of work to make useful. Particularly, uh, we can't even cast it yet, because it's just, um, well, I don't know what, Oh, different backgrounds for different areas, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm coming to my report card, but as we are, with, uh, basically level one, um, I'm gonna be kind of breaking the game and saying some name, no, uh, numbers here, names everywhere, numbers here, we start out with ten magical power, and we gain two every level. Now, to put this into, uh, context, and I should be on the report card. Yeah, to put this into context, uh, Bio End, Fire, Ice Storm, and Thunder obviously don't cost anything, but Healing costs two magic power, Bio Hee 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 costs two magic power as well, and Brain Dumb costs six magical power. Um, so it's, it's, it's very powerful, especially against normal enemies, because it can basically stop them hurting you. Against bosses it's less useful, but that's probably still why I'll be using it. It's kind of weird, but still, we'll get into that later. Jugem costs a total of 24 magical power, which is more than we have, and more than we're gonna have, probably until like the third or fourth dungeon, and we'll still only be able to cast it once, which isn't very useful. For another reason, Jugem, like most super powered, uh, super spell type things requires a fair bit of grinding, but because you don't need to grind to actually learn it in this game, the grinding's a bit different. You see, every time you cast you again, a random number generator clicks in and it checks if it will actually work or not. At the moment, it will only work 12.5% 12 12 of the time, and that's because we just got it. Every time we cast it successfully, that chance will increase by 3.125%, which is a bit of a weird number, but it makes a bit more sense when you think that it's phase 2. That means that we have to cast it 28 times successfully to be able to use it at 100%, and even then I don't think it actually can reach 100%, I think it uh, stops at about 90%, but I've never actually gotten that far to check. Uh, a little bit of math for you guys, that means that to but statistically, we have to cast it 70.2 times at a total magic cost of 1,685. 
I ended the game last time with 86 magic, and I was slightly over leveled then. So, yeah, that. I'm not going to be using it. You can if you want, but it's too much winding for my liking. Anyway, let's talk to some people in a magic village, because we've got all of that out of the way. Ray's big sis. I can't remember who Ray was at all, but hey. Don't pay any attention to Gramps' story. He's totally full of it. I'm not sure if I sound like a girl at all. Oh, an interesting thing. If you talk from behind him, he looks to his side. It's kind of strange. So, the forest of light has become dark. Has the Guardian deserted us? We'll have to find out later. Wait, does he... He turns more when you're behind him, I guess. Hmm. It's kind of clever. But yeah, we'll be going to the Forest of Light very soon, in fact. Probably next episode, because that is the first dungeon, after all. I guess I could check up... Uh, look about... The... Magical Kingdom Garden, but... I'll leave that to laughter. Anyway, Tuka's mother, who's probably going to have the same... Yeah, let's give her the same voice as my mother. By the way, Tuka also got a letter. Was that all you have to say? Why did I even give you a voice? And then, oh! Or something I love about this game. Most RPGs, you know, two few beds, one bed for a family of five. No, this game, we have a single mother and her child have four beds. They got it slightly wrong. It kinda didn't work out. Anyway, let's check this one now. This house, that's what they're called. Also, another single mother and bed. Well, three beds this time, slightly better, but still. Mio's mother. Hmm. Your mother is a famous expert musician. You should try to live up to her example. All mothers sound the same, you know. <laughs> oh, just out this way, there's nothing. There's a lot of this where they just kind of give pointless areas. And especially um, this one, it makes it look like there's a reason to go down here. But no, it's just a, it's just an elaborate dead end. Yeah. It's kind of annoying, but there's not even treasure in the game. It's kind of one of my big gripes about it. Oh, this old woman. She's going to take a while to talk to her, I think. Yeah, I have time. Why not? Would you like to hear the story about the gems that I heard when I was a child? Um, I guess. Uh-huh, yeah. But you look just like my grandma is at a palace. Wait, is she even a palace? What? No, she isn't. She is exactly the same sprite. That is disconcerting. Anyway, it seems the blue gem was concealed near the spirit's waterfall. These gems, by the way, are the seven gems to open the library door. So, uh, gonna be talking about all eight of No, seven of them. I just said seven gems. Ugh. The white gem, it seems, is hidden inside a souvenir. If you need this, you'll... you might try buying them all. You have to buy them all. And although we don't technically need it, we, you can skip this, but it's a nice little side quest, and I'll be doing it. The purple gem is near the fairy's flower bed, it seems. Um, it seems the cyan gem is in, on the sage's mountain. Yes. The yellow gem seems to be hidden in the depth of the shady well. And is this finally? I think there's one more after this. The red gem is said to be on Lookout Mountain, which is just back outside the village, but we can't get it yet, because we can't jump up ledges. And... The green gem is located in the dark forest. Have we said that one already? I can't remember. I'm senile. Yeah, that was the last, that was the first one we had. Okay. Yeah, we'll need to get the uh, Heart of the Forest ribbon and go back to the Sage Mountain to get that gem. That red gem, is it? I can't remember. Uh, but we'll do that later. I could go check out the Magic Kingdom Garden, but I don't have enough time. And I want to get into this first dungeon, but I will show off this. Oh yes, this is kind of nice music for one thing. But this is the um, fast travel system in this game. It's the, uh, we don't know the names of any stations right now, so we can't use it. But this is the flying squirrel station. That's right, we, we will be riding a flying squirrel all over the world when once we know where to go. Also, there's a cave here, but we can't go anywhere because we can't jump over the rose yet either. That doesn't require the heart of poison, that requires an another item. So all that we have left to go to is the Forest of Light. 
next time on Let's Play Madam Monica Tai Big Kindergarten Kids. Keep on playing, guys, and say goodbye to Ali. Bye!